technology sector specialist in charge of uh, developing these examples and uh, trying to provide direction to claimants on the eligibility. So he would be the person in charge of the ICT projects that we've um, talked about to date. And uh, he's been very supportive, in my opinion, on helping us to, to provide examples in other industries as we're trying to do here. So some of the things that he's talked about <clears throat> within the projects themselves and how uh, he would like to see them construed from a CRA standpoint is that um, he wants the claimants to self-assess. So any tools that they can provide or, or examples that allow a user to understand um, why they're eligible or not is again both in the CRA's interest and in the claimant's interest. One of the things that um, is going to be reiterated here and, and I tend to agree with it is the de definition of the existing state of the art um, by people who are qualified. So not people that are uh, learning about a new technology but people that have um, you know the basic training or skills um, to go in there how have they benchmarked the standard practice? How have they benchmarked against competitors? Have they really gone out there or did they just uh, think of a project based on a client need and, and jump into it without that um, due diligence, I would call it. Uh, <clears throat> what efforts were made to take a, a systematic investigation or search? And, um, and then, of course, what evidence was, was uh, collected? Evidence is often collected, but one of the key things is determining what types of evidence are the most uh, relevant forms and keeping those. So you don't need to keep all evidence. And in fact, providing a, a mountain of evidence is often less convincing than and having select components that really evidence some uncertainty or uh, experimentation on something that the reviewers agree is a valid area of, of experimentation. What I'll do now is I'll let Jay chime in real quick to talk about the Mac and Mac pipe loop liner removal process. Um, and how these might apply to, to that situation. Yeah, so I mean, on, on the Mac and Mac case, as we talked about, kind of what ifs, uh, I think Habib has some, some good comments uh, here, and, and some of them I think are, are similar to what we, we raised uh, during the discussion. I mean, uh, you know, could you, I think if the, the details of the trials um, and uh, the results were, were tracked, um, more so than they were, I think that uh, might have lent some uh, to, to a different result. Um, also, uh, you know, we, we talked about and did a quick prior art search, you know, trying to define, well, what is, you know, the current state of art when it comes to removing linings off these pipings using, you know, the type of technology they were. And, uh, and I think if, if they had that information, you know, and, and I think it's probably makes sense for a, you know, a company that stick, steps back and says, okay, before I start a project, let's just evaluate what is the state of the art and, and, and you know, is there anything that I can leverage um, that uh, as far as technology-wise that's out there already. So um, I, think, I think that uh, you know, is, is, is a valid point too as far as uh, defining uh, you know, the, essentially the, the start date or the, the beginning of your, uh, your, your TU. Um, you know, it's you know we we all here. I'm sure everybody um, on this uh, webinar here as well. How much documentation is enough? I think the Mac and Mac case clearly shows that they had below, well below the minimum bar of what CRA is expecting, and and in fact the the tax court is expecting. So I think it's that's an opportunity for us to you know even utilize you know this um, you know learning when you're out with client say, hey, we don't want to be in this position. I know when you're running these tests, you, you're going, you know, uh, a million miles an hour and you don't have time to, to, to log a lot of data, but you, you, you need to have something. And, and you know, it probably makes sense for you to look back at the end of the week and say, what did we learn from all of these tests? And that's kind of contemporaneous, great shred documentation too. So I think, I think Aviv's comments, uh, you know, kind of address that and, and are, are consistent with uh, you know, my analysis anyway of, of how could Mac and Mac have changed, uh, you know, things up maybe or, or other practitioners or other claimants change things up to have uh, a more desirable outcome. Um, Dave, if you want, I, I mean, I, I'd make a comment on, uh, I see you have uh, A and D precision on the screen. I could... Uh, Continue on. I mean, I I find it interesting with with A and D. I mean, 
obviously the 80 ton was was the the, the success the the eligible shred work and um, you know the commentary around that that I took that was that was interesting was all about the system uncertainty um, you know we, we've seen that seem to go in and out of uh, style um, you know over the years in shred and uh, the fact that it's, it's going to come back up through jurisprudence is uh, is interesting because I'm sure many people on the phone have, have experienced that where okay you're using and, and in the a and D case they said well you're using kind of known um, uh, situations or known technology in you know but you're putting them together in a different manner um, and then that's what kind of uh, those those interactive parameters or variables and not being able to predict the outcome is, is what I guess the judge saw as a system uncertainty so I, I um, yeah I, I thought that was an interesting takeaway. No, it's excellent, Jay. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any uh, any comments. So, you know, Dave, you can jump in, or if there's any questions, uh, you can see some of the comments on the screen there. Yeah, do you want to uh, discuss former drain, or do you want me to discuss that briefly? Uh, yeah, you, you go ahead, Dave. You can you can jump right. in there. So, just to recap on. Uh, Jay talked about the 80 ton lathe. Um, so again, I believe that what Habib provides here are, are some really good uh, ideas. Uh, and I, I think we talked about some of them when, when we communicated uh, the case initially. Um, so when they talk to um, different manufacturers or suppliers, um, I think the double wheel wall guiding was, was the Toshiba in the facts. But what did they tell them? Like what, factors contributed to high cost. So exactly kind of what, what we said in the discussion. So those types of quotes or evidence could be uh, uh, worth their weight in gold, as they say, as far as evidence. Um, so wherever we have experts coming to us explaining how a problem or, or how there's problems or what the problems could be uh, within the situation, again, these would be the kinds of documentation you'd want to focus on, and again, which would provide a lot of credibility to the claim. Uh, so again, he, he, a lot of his 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 um, comments refocus on prior art. How did you define prior art? How did you define uh, known methods? So again, we can see now that just describing, jumping into a project and describing a lot of experimentation without first having benchmarked uh, where you are. So what we call defining the square um, or the the bounds of existing knowledge is just going to leave you kind of swimming here. That you, you may not have a uh, uh, a case where you may have to go back and, and uh, try to do this retroactively, which is again not not the proper way to do it. Okay, on the roll grinding machine, um, again, they talk about novel ideas, but there could be more detail. And this is the kind of thing that maybe in the court case itself, um, these details were provided, um, but in the summary that we get to read or what we get to see without ordering all the transcripts, uh, we don't really know. Um, uh, what specifics that may have been very valuable here, but were just not reported properly. So, um, so again, I, I agree. All, all the things that we talk about here, with the new knowledge, um, how is it hard to model the vibrations? Uh, what do you suspect the areas that are creating the problems are, and, and what have you done about it? Right? So, uh, again, the comments that he provides again will um, will kind of reiterate that same thing, that the technical background of the employees, as in former drain where you had very skilled engineers both on the chemical formulation side as well as the mechanical side, and really they were arguably making advancements, uh, concurrent advancements in both fields um, can really help things. Um, <clears throat> benchmarking, uh, again, why why an existing method didn't, didn't work. Um, and, uh, and then talking about standard practice knowledge uh, is the recurrent theme here. So um, uh, I, I want to acknowledge at the end that CRA is just giving us feedback on um, what they would like to see and, and comments based on our descriptions, um, what they would feel is, is relevant um, to, to providing a positive uh, assessment. And uh, they're, they're not supporting that these descriptions are, are, are in or out on any uh, particular basis, but are merely an illustration of what could qualify. Okay, so on that basis, I will leave things open to any questions.